What's up, everyone? I just wrapped up my conversation with Connor Neal, and it was incredible. Connor's the kind of guy that you can talk with for hours because of his depth of knowledge and his experience that he has. Not just growing a YouTube channel, which he got to 280,000 subscribers, but also his success in entrepreneurship. Connor and I, we talk about what he specializes in, which is communication. And he gives tips on how to be a better communicator and tips on how to grow a YouTube channel. You're really going to get value from this episode. Enjoy the show. Connor, welcome to Influencer. I am honored to have you on the show today. Pleasure to join you, Brian. Yeah, absolutely. So for those of you that don't know you, can you tell tell us a little bit about your channel and, and, and what you teach? Well, I guess I spend uh, about a third of my time as a professor in a business school. And, you know, for the last 20 years, a uh, couple of days each month, I'm standing in front of MBAs, executive MBAs, senior leaders. And the course that I teach in MBA programs in these programs is on persuasive communications. How to speak, in particular, I'm looking at speaking rather than written, but how to speak in such a way that you move people to take action. And predominantly, the content that I use to, to run this course comes from 2,300 years ago. And uh, behind me, I think over here, you'll see a little statue of Aristotle. I channel Aristotle in this century. So 2,300 years ago, Aristotle wrote a book called Rhetoric which is essentially how do you speak in such a way that the other person, the audience, the people that are listening to you, first, they listen. And second, they take action. They do something that they may not have done had they not heard your words. And all that I do is about this, you know, one, what are the changes that are important to you? So I spend a lot of time with leaders saying, you know, what do you want? What do you want to create? How do you want to use this opportunity to lead? How will people be different thanks to the vision, the process, what you're going to go through? So, and, and I think here I tend to say the summary of my course is if you want to speak powerfully, you need four things. Number one, have something to say. Number two, say it well. Number three, say it with intensity, with emotion. And number four, connect to the person you're speaking to. And number one, have something to say. Get out there and live life. Do stuff fail, succeed, create, try. It's the successes and the failures and being able to tell those stories. That's the content that makes our life. But our own stories are what is having something to say. Say it well, say it often. And in some way, I got onto YouTube just to say things often, to repeat messages over and over and get good at speaking concisely. That in a classroom, I have 75 minutes. But on a YouTube video, if I can't capture your attention in 20, 30, 40 seconds with something, I'm losing you. So this say it often is the way we learn to say it well. And three, intensity is you need to care. There's no pretend caring. You've got to find what you care about. You've got to find what drives you, what moves you, and pay attention to the world. And to me, this thing here, journal is the most valuable habit I have in my life. When I was 14 years old, I had a teacher. I was at school in Chicago. My father's job moved from Dublin to Chicago. I hated it. But I met the teacher that had the greatest impact on my life, Mr. Matz. And Mr. Matz had us, a class of apathetic 14-year-olds, five minutes in every day, pen touching paper in our journal. You know, what's going on? What are you seeing? What questions do you have? First few days, I just went through the motions. But then I sort of thought, this is going to happen. Every day is going to make us pen touch paper. I'm going to just start capturing what I'm thinking, what's going on. And since I was 14 years old, I've taken some minutes every day to just stop and know where I am, what's going on, what I'm thinking about, what's happening, what questions I have. Uh, and to me, this journey of starting to know yourself the, the most powerful leadership book that you can have, Ryan, is your own life, well-documented. And the sad thing is so few people take the time to document their own life, to, to stop and remember how today was. Most people cannot tell you where they were seven days ago, 14 days ago. They need to go and look. Like, 
I can tell you who I was with, what I was worried about, what I was thinking, what it felt like to be me, what I was wondering about. And I think it's so important in this age where there's so much distraction that if you're determined to create, you find a habit where you learn about yourself. You learn about what moves you, what gives you a sense of fulfillment. And sometimes these are crazy. It doesn't have to make sense, but you need to document what are the activities that give you energy? Who are the people that give you energy? And just fill your life with those. But caring is how we speak with intensity, finding things that really matter to us as individuals. And the fourth, connect with people. To me, you know, your creation of this podcast, the journey you're on of learning about others, learning what they're going through, learning what it feels like, what learning. And, and I think you mentioned that what you're starting to see as a common thread in the interviewees, resilience. They found some way to stick on, on target when things get tough, when things get foggy, when the weather gets hard, they still get out there and move. Uh, and to me, you know, one of the things that I've learned in my own life, and I didn't get this when I was young, it took me going through some real challenges as an entrepreneur uh, to stop asking the question, what's in it for me? What do I get? What am I getting from Brian this 30 minutes? What do I get from being on this podcast? And turn it around and just say, I'm here. What does Brian need from me? What does Brian's listeners need from me today? What do my daughters need from me today? So just turning this question around. And to me, every time I'm about to enter a classroom as a, as a teacher, before I enter the classroom, I look through the door and I stop and I look at the people inside. And there's a couple of things I do. The first is I see them as five-year-olds. They might be 55-year-olds dressed in suits. They might be 30-year-old MBAs. But I stop and see them as five-year-olds dressed as adults, still waiting for the instruction book of life to be provided. And I think every one of us is a five-year-old inside. And we've learned to put a put a, a surface that makes it look like we have the answers, we know where we're going. Every single person inside is a five-year-old trying to make sense of what's going on. And when I see people as a five-year-old trying to make sense and I step into the room, I, I remember what they need from me. You know, the second is, is just to think, what brings them here today? What brings them into this class here today? Why do they sign up to be here? What do they need to get from this time in this room with each other and with me so that they go away stronger, clearer? And, and to me, as a teacher, I have two goals. I'm not trying to stuff content in your head. I want you to walk out of the room with two things. One, self-belief. Two, self-confidence. Self-belief is a belief that if you do this work, it's going to help you do something important to you. And the second self-confidence is I need you to see within this time that we are together that if you put a bit of effort in, you can immediately start to see some results. You can feel that if I put effort in, I get results. And if I put effort in, it's going to help me in something that really matters in my life. And I think as a teacher, there's so much content in the world. Like you want to learn anything. You go to YouTube, you go to Wikipedia. The challenge is how to get people to motivate themselves to seek out this knowledge. My daughters do not need me to know things. They need me to help them be curious, to help them have wonder, to help them believe that they have the capacity to, to take big problems and begin step by step to pull together the pieces and make a difference. So to me, uh, that's what I teach. Part of it is communication. A big part of it is what do you care about? You got to pick something. You know, you've got 70, 80, 90, 120 years here. It's not just to earn money. You know, you can earn money, but that, that's like breathing. You know, you would not say, you know, Brian managed to breathe every day. What a success. Now, breathing is a given. It's above and beyond that. Making money is like breathing. The question is, in what way? Uh, on Twitter yesterday, Naval Ravikant, I love uh, some of the, the tweets he shared. And there was one just saying, you know, a fulfilling life, three hobbies, a hobby that earns you money, a hobby that keeps you fit, and a hobby that gets you hanging out with great people. Gosh, Connor, I love that. 
I want to touch on something that you mentioned earlier and, and ask, you said that number one in the, the four pillars that you teach, number one is have something to say. And you had mentioned that you journal and that's a big part of like you documenting your life and you always have something to say. So my question to you is how do you know when is the right time to say whatever it is you're going to say, or like, how do you know the right material to share with the person that, that you're communicating with? I guess ask them what what's moving them. Uh, to me, there's a, a podcast that I love, Dan Sullivan. Dan Sullivan is the the guy that created story brand guy. No, I think that's Donald Miller. Story. Donald Miller. I'm sorry, Dan Sullivan. Dan yeah. Sullivan. A, I love his podcast. It's not any one episode. It's it's the way he thinks through his podcast. You just get access to the way he looks at the world. And Dan Sullivan, one of the, the conversations he had was about this type of question. And, and he said, when you walk into a room, if you approach anyone, at the very best, you're number 21 on their list of priorities right now. Like they have 20 other things that are more important than you in their life. If you speak about yourself, you're dropping from 21 to 30 to 50 and falling off the list. If you can talk about them, if you can start to hear what's important to them, why are they here? What brings them here? What are they looking for? What frustrates them? Then you have a chance of moving from 20 to 15 to 10 to 8 and maybe becoming someone that they see as a source of clarity, a source of energy, a source of, of support on their journey. But you know, your question here is, if, if I'm thinking, when is the right time for me? It's the wrong perspective. It, it needs to be, and, and I think in writing and in blogging, I write for one person. And sometimes it's, it's very clear who that person is. Sometimes it's a student that I had a conversation or coffee with today. Sometimes it's my daughter. Same on YouTube. I have a very clear image of who I'm speaking to. So I'm, I'm not speaking to 8 billion people when I make a video. I, I can picture the person that this message is for. Sometimes it is for me, but I'm seeing me from an outside. I'm not, I'm not doing it for me. I'm trying to put a framework together to help me move through a, a challenge or a struggle that I'm dealing with. I think the other thing that, that for me, I learned in social media, because I had a blog for many years before YouTube. So I'd, I'd already had to figure out how do you come up with stuff every two, three days to share. Uh, and when I first started my blog, the first five articles were everything I knew. And, and after five of them, I had nothing else to write. There's no more things that I'm an expert in. I've, I've covered everything that I know as an expert. Uh, and I ran out of things to say. Uh, and actually what, what someone said to me was, don't share what you're an expert in. Share what you're learning. If you share what you're learning, you will never run out of things to share. Uh, and I guess my blog became almost my, my own Evernote that's public. So instead of taking notes in Evernote, I took notes in Blogger and now WordPress and, and just share them. And, and sometimes I have to edit them a bit so that they're publicly shareable. But my blog was kind of just my own Evernote made public. And then when YouTube came along, you know, I, I spoke to you before, my, my beginnings on YouTube, I didn't get on YouTube to build a channel to you know, the, the idea of a creator as a career in 2006, 2007, I don't know when exactly I, I, I began on YouTube, that didn't e exist so much. What I said to you is actually, I put my first videos on YouTube to avoid sending DVDs out to speaker agencies and to HR in companies. So I was just saving money on posting DVDs and saving time on waiting for the, the DVD to arrive. So speaker agencies could decide whether they want to work with me or not. And you know, without putting much effort in at all, I connected one day and, and found there was a few thousand people interested in this. And it was only really six, seven years ago with a group 
of entrepreneurs that I and they made a commitment to take this seriously, made a commitment that we would hold each other accountable to create. And in my case, it was one video every week. And there was several years where no matter what it took, every Tuesday, I would have a video to put up. And there were some weeks I had seven or eight ideas that I could have put together. And there were many weeks where I would switch the camera on, put the video on and sit and wait. And so I have sometimes waited for 60 minutes in front of a camera that is filming, not saying anything, knowing I am not switching it off until I say something that is of use to someone out there in the world. And I think you know, this in blogging, one of the things that I remember realizing is sometimes you write a really good post and you're super proud and you publish it and you're so proud and it's the first thing up there on the blog. This is a dangerous thing because the level of the next post starts to become so high in order to be worthy of moving it down on the blog. And I realized it's a very dangerous thing to write a blog post that you really love because tomorrow it becomes very difficult to write something of that level. So one of the things that I taught myself in blogging is when you hit that, write a really crappy post and put it up. And now the following day, it becomes a whole lot easier to produce another thing. And the great thing on social media is you can delete that crappy post from yesterday. The moment it, it's just re-leveled your expectation of, of how good something needs to be to continue, you can delete it. But sometimes what I've actually found is the things that I think are a waste of energy, that, that there's nothing valuable in it, resonate much more with a wider audience than the things that I think are brilliant. So one of the lessons I have learned, particularly with YouTube, is I am a very poor judge of what content is going to resonate and capture the imagination of, uh, of, of viewers. And very often... You know, to me, I think that there's two types of experts. You've got Tony Robbins as one type and Jim Collins perhaps as another. And Tony Robbins is brilliant at getting people started on the journey. You know, there's millions of people that began personal development, looking at their self, taking themselves seriously because Tony Robbins in his books, his conference, YouTube has triggered that there's a possibility to see something different from where you are and begin. But often someone look, you know, once you begin, you look for a different type of expert who can, who can give you the path. Uh, and to me, you know, I, I want to be the second type of expert, almost an expert to experts. But sometimes you need to put something that is quite simple from your point of view, but it's a way that someone new can gain quick access to, to the framework, to the way of thinking. So to, to me, some of the most watched videos were, I have nothing to say, and I end up just sharing something that feels to me completely banal, completely empty of wisdom, but just a, a structure. Right, three things you need to think about when dealing with this, four ways of handling anxiety. And it really resonates. So to me, learning that to your question, you know, what, what and when to publish, I don't know. And my own judgment is, is quite a poor judge of how well a video is going to do. And I guess you know, it's debatable what is doing well as a video. You know, is it lots of views? Is it lots of people that sends you an email saying, wow, that really helped. I made a difference. I spoke to someone. I did something I would not have done. Or that was the bit of motivation I needed just now. And sometimes videos that have fewer views get more emails from people saying, wow, that was just what I needed right now. Uh, videos that get masses of views don't have that interaction of, wow, that was something special. But yeah, you, you don't quite know. Connor, you probably get this all the time, but I feel like you're somebody that I can have a conversation with for a few hours and just it just kind of go into a bunch of different extensions and really kind of dive into, um, you know, the knowledge base and the experience that you have. I know that we've come up on our 
30 minutes. So uh, we can go ahead and, and, you know, get the episode wrapped up here. And I just, I honestly want to thank you for, you know, your time and having this conversation and sharing some insights. Um, and one of the things that you talked about that I think is, is vital is that you had talked about that you speak to one person. And so you have a clear understanding of who your avatar is. And so when you are doing your, your post or, or when you are communicating, you know who you're communicating to. And I have also found that to be a common thread between people that grow on something like a YouTube channel is they know they have a clear idea of who their audience is, what they struggle with and what they want to learn. So thank you once again for your time to, uh, you know, with me today and uh, hopefully we keep in touch. Appreciate it. Definitely. No, thank you. And thank you for dedicating yourself to do the, to these interviews. Absolutely. You're not the only one on this journey. And you know, in fact, one thing that I remember being very helpful for me, um, I, I have a friend who went to a Tony Robbins seminar 25, 30 years ago, and then went to another one five years ago. And 25 years ago, Tony Robbins was not the finished article. He was on his journey. He hadn't got it all figured out. And he was doing the work together with the participants. And, and it really impacted my friend. A few years ago, my friend went back to London, mega event, thousands of people, Tony Robbins on the stage, and he, he's the finished article. He's dropping presidents' names, actors' names. It's, it's a show. And, and people in the audience, they're not really doing the work. They're there to get a selfie with Tony in the background. And, and my friend told me, you know, Connor, that first unfinished Tony doing the work together with me, that changed my life. This is entertainment. He says, Connor, never lose that you're on this journey together with us. And I think, you know, Brian, that's your mission. Never stop. Never become the finished Brian. God, what a way to end that. Connor, man, thank you so much for that tip. That's something I'm going to hang on to. Uh, basically for the rest of my life so appreciate you dropping that man well you have a great rest of your day and uh you know look forward to keeping in touch absolutely so barcelona to west coast usa what an amazing <laughs> world have a good one Brian. yeah you too